Hello everyone, I'm Fabiana Rodriguez, artist and activist and president at the Center for Cultural Power. I have short curly brown hair with little blue rays and I'm wearing glasses and a dress with a lot of different patterns. Nature has been the inspiration for humans' creative pursuits since the beginning of time. Famous artists from all eras and generations have quoted nature as their muse in their cave paintings, in their poetry, in their stories around the fire, in their art, in their music, in their writing, and in their films. For most creators today, climate anxiety is not moving creativity. It's stifling it. The constant images of destruction and ecological devastation that replay over and over again in our minds, on our phones, on our televisions, has pushed Hollywood instead to create escapist content, a fantasy land where the climate crisis doesn't exist. But how can those two coexist in a way that fuels audiences with knowledge and the power to step up to the plate and take charge of our own environmental impacts and carbon footprints and create systemic change within their networks? Let's take COVID as something we can deconstruct to help us think about how we can tackle the climate crisis. The reality is that when scary things are pressing, we tackle them all the time. In many cases, we've already acclimated to preparing ourselves for climate disasters without attributing those preparations to climate. In coastal cities, for example, people purchase their generators, stormproof their homes, and make sure that they're all stocked up on flashlights, canned goods, and other emergency supplies so that they're ready when hurricanes hit. In California, where we've all experienced earthquakes, we're encouraged to keep emergency preparation kits in our homes and in our cars. And we have similar preparedness for fires and other areas are prepared for tornadoes or floods. And of course, all of these natural disasters are worsened by climate change and by the negative impact of the fossil fuel industry. Let's go back to March 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. There was new information in the news from our coworkers, from our government and health bodies alerting us to the threat of COVID. And that threat was immediate, which required us to take actions to prevent that threat. And though a lot of folks may question those actions, for the most part, we have taken it upon ourselves to do what we can and to adjust practices, which we were usually comfortable with, and to move forward with the reality in an ever-changing tide of information. And we continue to receive information and we continue to figure out how we can maintain our health and the health of others. Why was the COVID crisis so embraced hardly while the climate crisis often goes ignored? Well, first of all, COVID threatened the lives of old white men in power who are creating policy. And these men did not want to be forced to sit in Congress without masks, with social distancing and vaccinations because there was a chance that they could be infected. And secondly, until lately, privileged people for the most part have not had to encounter the climate crisis personally. It has felt like a far distant future. But in the last few months, that has all changed. There is a greater awareness worldwide about the impacts of climate crisis, and we are seeing natural disasters unfold before our very eyes, which are worsened by climate change. And yet, it still isn't in the financial interests of these old white men in power to protect us. And finally, the risk of climate change have been stated to become a global health crisis. Why are we not treating it with the same urgency as COVID? Making changes at the government level and industry-wide are possible when needed. And yet we are told time and time again that climate isn't pressing enough. What will it take to create that change? In terms of the entertainment industry's reaction, it's still a business and a corporation worth $2 trillion worthwide. We are an industry with a tremendous amount of cultural power. Our most powerful method of distributing our talent and information is through storytelling. Without the power of storytelling and the influence that it has around the globe, this industry would not be profitable. And yet, 
there is little acknowledgement of the fact that developing grounded, relatable climate stories could change the tide of how people see and react to and respond to climate change. The climate stories that have existed overwhelmingly focus on doom, gloom, and disaster and position white men as heroes, even though we know that it will not take an individual to change the climate crisis, it will take collective action. Furthermore, so much of the way that we tell stories in Hollywood revolves around the fossil fuel industry. Time and time again, so much of our adventure stories are focused around the car. Where are images of clean energy? Where are the images of transportation in the future? We are actually lacking depictions of a clean energy future, which we desperately need at this point. And you may even ask, what even is climate storytelling? At this point, it's not a genre, but it should be. Stories about our relationship to nature, how we heal in this moment, how we find collective solutions so that we can build a future in which we are in harmony with nature. That needs to be infused into our storytelling right now. The IPCC has indicated to us that we have 10 years to reverse the dramatic impacts of climate change. And we are not going to get there until we accelerate our most powerful tool, which is the tool of storytelling. We know that storytelling opens hearts and minds. Storytelling has the potential to expand our imagination. And so how can we better integrate stories about nature, stories about how we will tackle the climate crisis? I am an artist and a storyteller. And so much of the art that I create is based on my lived experience. I grew up in East Oakland during the era of the war on drugs, when addiction, gang violence, police brutality was ravaging my community. I lived in one of the most dangerous cities in the country that only 20 years later would be overridden by gentrification. But there was also an invisible enemy in my hood, and that was pollution. People in my community live eight to 10 years less than people in the hills, the mostly white people who have organized so that fossil fuel trucks do not go through their neighborhood. But you know what neighborhood they go through? They go through my neighborhood. And the impact that that has had on people who live in my community has been devastating, especially at a time when a respiratory virus is disproportionately affecting black and Latinx people. My community bore the brunt of climate injustice. And that is what motivates me to tell stories about our environment and to tell stories of resilience. You might think that climate storytelling is political, and that's also why the industry has avoided it, but it's not. We are all of part of nature. The impacts of the environment are something that we all need to hold together. Climate change is ubiquitous. It is going to affect all of us, although the level to which it impacts us will vary according to the amount of privilege we do or do not have. I urge you to tap into your creativity and to weave in our climate reality into the stories that you are creating. If you have the privilege to tell these stories, it is important that you are a conduit for those who are most impacted, especially folks in the global south. It is important that you are a bridge to uplift the voices of the global majority and to center their stories in this space creatively and financially. Because it is the people of the global majority who are the first and the most affected by the climate crisis. I know climate change is overwhelming and I know we are feeling a huge sense of climate anxiety as we witness what's happening to our world. But I wanna remind you of your power as a storyteller. As human beings, we have been telling stories since the beginning of time. It is stories that has organized societies. It is stories that have inspired us. Even in times of darkness, artists have helped us see the light. We can channel our anxiety into climate storytelling. Our most powerful tool as creatives is that we have the ability to shape the imagination. We are world builders. We can help people see another reality even when that reality is not here. We can inspire people, we can expose problems, we can reveal the complexity of what we're experiencing and speak to people's hearts and emotion. That is our power as storytellers. 
We can show people what a clean energy future looks like. We can inspire people to rethink their consumption patterns and to join mass movements for climate solutions. We can change hearts and minds and move away from images that only show us destruction. We as storytellers can confront the monster in the closet, transforming our anxiety to impactful content that moves audiences to act. We can choose to allow this moment to spark tremendous inspiration and ideas. We need you in the climate movement. We write the stories, we get to decide. Are you down, Hollywood?